northern Myanmar is one of the last remote and unexplored places left in this world. This region extends into the eastern Himalaya. It is characterized by dense jungle, extremely rugged and challenging terrain, and countless unclimbed peaks. Late in the summer of 2013, a team of five Americans and two Burmese climbers traveled to northern Myanmar to attempt a first ascent of the mountain called Gamling Razi. Only one other successful climbing expedition in history has been to this isolated portion of the Himalaya. In 1996, Takashi Ozaki of Japan and Namar Johnson of Myanmar made the first ascent of Kakaburazi, generally accepted as the highest peak in Southeast Asia. There are many conflicting elevation records of Kakaburazi's height, and many sources hint that another peak, Gamling Razi, could be higher. This expedition set out to test that theory. During their six-week expedition through the heart of Kakobo Razi National Park, the team traveled over 300 miles on foot, climbing a cumulative 85,000 vertical feet through some of the most difficult and remote terrain on this planet, all for a chance to alter Himalayan history and prove that it is Gamling Razi that is the highest peak in Southeast Asia. This story is not just about climbing Gamling Razi. After decades of isolation, Myanmar's doors only recently opened to the rest of the world. This was to be the first known expedition into the region by Westerners since this change came about. Many of their most profound experiences stem from the privilege of meeting and living with the unique people of this enchanting country. It was these experiences that played the greatest role in giving meaning to this extraordinary journey. Unlike much of the world, Myanmar feels timeless. Ancient temples endure throughout Myanmar. The great rivers of this country, the Irrawaddy and Salween, still remain an important source of life for this nation. Roughly 60 million people from 135 different ethnic tribes live in Myanmar, and its history spans more than 2,500 years. Throughout the country, the juxtaposition between modern and ancient blends seamlessly, and the people have an ageless rhythm that's unique to Myanmar. Pagodas by the Irrawaddy. Burma is a country about the size of Texas, ringed by the sea and a horseshoe of high mountain. A shrine of Buddhism with its pagodas, its fabled road to Mandalay, its colorful cities and villages. Two great rivers flow through Burma, the Irrawaddy and the Salween. On these rivers and their tributaries, the people of Burma depend for much of their livelihood. Burma saw an opportunity for independence at the outset of World War II. From Burmese General Yu Aung San, the head of his country's delegation to Britain, our reporter was given this uncompromising message. The demand of our people is complete independence. New Delhi joined in greeting Burma's Independence Day after the Union Jack had been replaced by the flag of independent Burma. The military took control in 1962. General Ne Win mounted a coup. He ruled Burma for a quarter century, launching what he called the Burmese way of socialism. 
The military changed the country's name in English from Burma to Myanmar in 1989. There are few political leaders in the world as loved as Myanmar's opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Change can come about in many ways and change can come uh, about through violence as well. But I believe that for change to be sustainable and change to be, uh, to be truly beneficial in the long run, then it must come about in a peaceful way. Clearly you will be playing a key role in uh, your country's future for many years to come uh, as Burma seeks the freedom and the prosperity and the dignity uh, that uh, not only the people of this country deserve, but people all around the world deserve. So thank you for your inspiring message. Even in rapidly developing cities like Yangon, traditional values and the country's dominant religion, Buddhism, remain a driving force in the lives of its people, guiding the ebb and flow of everyday life. My name is Molly Loomis. I live in Victor, Idaho. It's sort of rare in this day and age to go to a place where you still have to trek for weeks to get to your objective. My name's Eric Daft. I'm from Victor, Idaho. I didn't really know exactly what to expect. You have in your mind what you think you're gonna see out here, and you just prepare yourself the best you can. My name's Mark Fisher. I'm from Victor, Idaho. It's truly an amazing opportunity, not only to be a climber on this trip, but to be on this expedition as a photographer and a cinematographer documenting this once in a lifetime journey. My name is Wen Go Gu. I'm from Yango, and I'm one of the technical climbing club of Myanmar, TCCM. We see a different culture. We can learn how they live, how they study, how they struggle. My name is Po Bin. I live in Yango and Myanmar. So I'm a DCCM instructor. My dream is I'm climbing to Mount Glen Razi. My name's Chris Nance. I'm a part of the Gambling Razi expedition. I've never been to a place like this. The jungle part is definitely the most intriguing component of the expedition because when we get to the mountains, it feels like home. My name's Andy Tyson. I'm from Victor, Idaho. One of the more appealing things about this trip is that it's kind of an old school Himalayan expedition climbing a peak that hasn't been climbed before and that it may be higher than the, than the highest peak. As I was planning the expedition, I came across the Technical Climbing Club of Myanmar as a, as a possible partner. They would be able to help with some of the logistics and they were very interested in making sure that the Burmese person got to the summit. ပြည့်ကြုံအများဆုံးတို့ကိုကျွန်တော်ရလွတ်ချင်းလို့ကျွန်တော်ကျွန်တော်ရမှန်မာရေးထဲမှာကျွန်တော်ပြန်ကြီ
Loaded up, we're headed to the north. Got everything piled up over here. Lots of bags. Weighing in, 76 kg, feeling a little heavy. Maybe gonna lose a little bit, we'll see what happens. I am, I am two times his size, exactly. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> and it's only gonna get more exciting. In order for the team to reach the starting point for their expedition into Kakabo Razi National Park, they flew with all of their supplies from Yangon in southern Myanmar to Putao, the northernmost town in Myanmar with an airstrip. The genesis of this expedition was Andy's tireless research into the height discrepancies of both Gamlin and Kakaburazi. Two years later, that curiosity had led the team to this moment. If they could actually stand on the summit and accurately measure its height, perhaps they could prove that Gamlin is indeed the highest peak in Southeast Asia. Arriving in Patao, the team was initiated into a Myanmar that stands in stark contrast to the modernizing changes underway in Yangon. The
upon a bridge, you jump off it. So today we found a really beautiful bridge, a little higher than the last one, and took our sort of midday bath and puffed off the bridge. It's pretty nice. And as usual, we have this beautiful river and a nice bridge to jump off of. about, I don't know, 11 or 12 miles. Most days on the trail, yesterday we did 20 miles. Yeah, the hiking is super beautiful. Organizing an expedition of this scale to northern Myanmar was a logistical undertaking of massive proportions. And without the support from local villages, there would have been no way for the team to reach their objective. There was a 10-person local support team who traveled with them throughout their expedition. They helped with logistics on the front end as well as organizing the day-to-day -day porter and travel support while on the trail. A physician was also on the trip and provided medical care to villagers along the route. A 10-person cook team worked tirelessly, keeping the expedition fed with amazing food. Porters were found in local villages along the route, and the team stayed with local families throughout their journey to the last village. All told, there were up to 90 people on the trail at any given time. I just saw the most gigantic spider crawling on the wall of our sleeping arrangement tonight. How big is Jenny Camp? And he was fast. And he looked like the one in arachnophobia that killed like an entire town. Yeah. Oh, that's the guy, dude. Dude, I don't want to sleep out here. Can I get a full night's sleep? Good morning. How's your sleep? Fine. Slept good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad I brought a lot of coffee. I probably drink three cups in the morning, maybe a couple in the afternoon, a couple with dinner. I even make my own coffee and mix their instant coffee with it. Think these bugs bite? Can't tell yet. <laughs> My shoes were both filled with bees, and then I couldn't find anywhere that wasn't bees everywhere. There was a swarm there, so we all ran down the trail until we found the first spot where we missed they weren't swarming around us. The hike today has been pretty fantastic. We've all had all these just huge cascading waterfalls that just come out of nowhere. Which means like I'm in Hawaii or something. Leeches everywhere. Just pulled a nice leech off my ankle. They don't come off very easy. Oh, I got a leech right here. It's doing the little slinky dance. I feel really lucky to be exploring and hanging out in these villages that have really never seen westerns. <laughs> We're still seven days from base camp. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the toughest hikes to a climb I've ever done in my life. Probably the toughest. There's no relief. The trails are wet, slippery, side hilly. They don't really resemble trails, to be totally honest. It's like everything out here is kind of out to get you or something. Bugs, bees, leeches, vipers, you name it. 
think everybody's feet are really hurting. Oh, blister. Nice. Nice and soggy. Getting ready to walk after lunch. Yeah. I think that honestly was the longest three miles I've ever hiked. Pretty brutal travel overall. A lot of up and down, a lot of mud, really thick jungle. I think I'm going to be really excited when we actually get into the mountains and get away from the away from the bugs and get up into cooler temperatures. The last two weeks in the jungle have definitely been some of the hardest, uh, hardest travel days of my life. But I wouldn't trade it for anything, honestly. <laughs> We're at the village of Tazundam, uh, where the, the main Nam Tamai River does a big switchback. And there's a couple different directions you can go from here. One, you can get to India, you can also get to China in one direction, or you can get to way northern Myanmar. So we're going to head up north on the main Nam Tamai River. ตัวเองเองนะเตรียมเรียนเตรียมเรียนบ่เนาะลูกบ่เนาะกูกูมีพี่ๆมาๆเนี่ยอารมณ์ซีๆลงๆนี่ๆๆอารมณ์ตัว
Beyond the last village, the relentless jungle trails and the uncertainty of the route ahead wore down the group. Their bodies were tired. Each passing day, they were getting closer to their objective, but the toughest part still lay ahead as the team quickly ascended through difficult terrain toward base camp. Temperatures became much cooler, and the vegetation changed dramatically. It was mossy and lush, much like the Pacific Northwest. The transition from village life to wilderness camping was a welcome change, and the team savored this time camping with the local ethnic Tibetans. Epic. It had some treacherous moments. You can see that there's a lot of avalanche activity around here. Some ice tunnels that the river traveled through. It was awesome to roll into base camp today and get our first real views of the peaks above us. And it was such a relief to get here after weeks on the trail and be welcomed by this incredible Alpine Shangri-La. Uh, we've got the TP set up and uh, we've got a little stove going. TP sounded luxurious, only to find out that the TP is a very leaky environment. Most of it's wet. <laughs> More wet than the manufacturer suggests. You know, we've done the best we can, but really the only way we're gonna know what we've got is to get up there and see what's going on. Coming up this thing is the ridge. This is the flat spot that's the peak. I, I just don't know what it's going to be like, but I'm excited to check it out. Beyond base camp, the terrain was complex, steep, and unknown. Topographical maps don't exist. They had to inform their decisions by low-resolution satellite imagery. Once they left base camp, they were completely on their own. Over the last six days, getting to high camp has been, it's been pretty brutal. I'm not gonna lie, the, the loads have been heavy. We are carrying loads to our next camp. We uh, moved up to what we thought would be our advanced base camp yesterday with the intent to follow the ridge because it's the most direct path to the summit. But between there being no water here and the rock quality being really poor, I think we're gonna have to change our focus we have not seen our objective yet. I think the weather is going to be a, a, probably the crux. Really no clearing, but maybe an hour in the morning tops. As the team neared their ultimate destination, it became clear that Winco and Popin's abilities were being stretched and challenged. This was the most advanced mountaineering experience either had ever attempted, and concerns arose as to whether they could safely make the summit. We had a little sunny spell this morning, the first in two weeks. We got about an hour and a half, maybe two hours of sunshine today, and it was honestly the highlight of the trip. It changed the mood of everybody. Got to dry some of our gear out, which really boosted our morale quite a bit. Actually, today's been a really good day. It's starting to get some sun, although it is threatening now. <laughs> Wish I had some suspenders losing some weight here. <laughs> Screw Subway, just come to the Himalaya. <laughs> First look at gambling, Razi. Um, I just got up here, 16,000 feet. It's pretty crappy rock up to this point. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. It's gonna be technical for sure. A little less excited about the ridge and a little bit more excited about snow and ice. Um, and there's some big hanging glaciers and seracs and stuff. There's one kind of right, right there, just on the edge of the cloud pretty big hangar serac that would be tough to get around. We saw the mountain for the first time today, which was super awesome to see. A route's directly above us. 
looks pretty promising. And we found a perfect spot right here at the base of our route. We just have a few days here and looking for a good weather window to get to the top. We pulled the team together and uh, had a little discussion with the Burmese climbers, just again reiterating the fact that it was going to be a big day. Wind Co has put a ton of energy and effort into this climb and throughout the trek been trying to coach him on different ways to move efficiently, emphasizing to him that we do need to see faster paces up higher on the mountain. We're all feeling a little anxious to climb this thing, hoping the weather settles down for us. There's a chance we might get some sun in the next week, or we'll climb this thing in the rain, one of the two. So tomorrow we're going to wake up early and give it a shot, see what we can do. I do I do I do not know. I do not know. We roped up and we, we headed through the, the lower crevasse field. We started to run into problems with Winco, with his footing, with his ice axe work. You know, we had to, as a rope team, make a very difficult choice for the safety and the, and the speed of the group to turn him around. It was hard. We're hanging out 18,000 feet and hoping we can find the route. So we close to the summit, maybe 1,200 feet or 1,500 feet. So you don't have to know how to get that day. So you don't have to know how to get that day. So you don't have to know how to get that day. At about 18,000 feet, the sun poked out enough so we could start to see enough little features that we knew we needed to turn um, up a particular slope and head for, head for the summit ridge. We just finished kind of a techie section, get laid on Andy, um, getting up to a little wind scoop here. It's nice and protected. Gonna eat and uh, keep rolling. Pretty amazing to already even be this far. So hopefully in another hour or so we'll be on top. Yeah, almost to the top. Gambling Rose. Got about 500 feet to go to hit summit. Or sight! summit kind of cone ridge area was exciting because we had to hit this one ridge and kind of osh of all across the ridge for a couple of moves. It was pretty exciting to, to take the lead at the last bit and actually climb all the way up and stand on the summit and just feel like, it's hard to describe, but just to stand on that summit for the first time after having planned a trip for two years is just an amazing feeling. Holy cow. Nice work, Molly. I did not know if this moment would come. Yeah, Molly. Ah. Ah, nice work. Ah, we did it. Chris. Ah, give it up to when we topped out on the summit, and it was pretty amazing. It was a very proud moment for me. When Popin got to the summit, and he was so excited. No, call up Andy, Molly, Mark, Eric, Chris. When he got up there and, and definitely made me feel very emotional about the climb and the work and the teamwork that we put in to make it happen. Reaching the summit was a pinnacle achievement for the team. 
And in that moment, the collective stresses of the expedition suddenly went forgotten. They had accomplished their goal of not only making the first ascent of Gamling Razi, but also taking a direct measurement of the summit's elevation using an advanced GPS receiver. The descent remained, but for a time, they basked in the experience of standing where no one else had ever stood before. He had a lot of hopes in coming into this, and he worked really hard to be here. And so turning him around was a really, really tough call. As much as we all hoped he would uh, succeed, it, it just wasn't in the cards. Back. Everybody's in Winco. Hello. I'm sorry. That is nice work out here. We got into camp, and, um, and Winco was waiting. We had a we had a good hug, and um, you know he, he he was full of emotion. You know I think he was really proud of us. So I told him, you know, not long time, my team so I said I would tell you, or not to sing it out. I think that's the hardest part of mountaineering is not making the top sometimes. The team's success on Gambling Razi wasn't simply about reaching the summit. It was a moment of celebration for everyone who struggled for six weeks to make this expedition possible. After their ascent of Gambling Razi, the team had to retrace their difficult trek through the jungle. By the time they reached the national park border village of Panam Dim, they had traveled close to 300 miles on foot and climbed a cumulative 85,000 vertical feet. They were exhausted. They're gonna think I'm crazy, but that, that's too big to be a bird. Much to their good fortune, they were transported by helicopter from Panam Dim back to Putao, saving them the final grueling 100-mile trek. On their arrival in Patal, they were greeted with open arms and treated like heroes in the country. Making a first ascent on a big peak is important to me, but more important than that is just the all-encompassing experience of this expedition. It's interacting with villagers, it's learning about a new culture, it's experiencing Myanmar and and its people in a way that, that very few foreigners or Westerners have ever been able to do. It's always such a richer, more meaningful, deeper experience when you do make connections with the, the people living in the country. Meeting the people, traveling through the country, seeing the, the wilderness, just the journey to get to where we're going is a huge part of the reason to come here. It's just a, a special place on the planet, I feel like, with the biodiversity and the wild lands and just unexplored territory. The journey was far more significant than the actual summit itself. The team measured the height of Gamling Razi to be 19,258 feet. Because the expedition's measurement was 38 feet lower than the most commonly cited height of 19,295 feet for Kakabu Razi, they weren't able to confirm with this measurement alone that Gamling is higher than Kakabu. There are many reasons to still believe that Gamling Razi may indeed be the highest peak. For any final determination to be made, Kakabu Razi will need to be climbed and its height measured with a GPS device of similar accuracy. Until that happens, the mystery remains.